first, so let us start. Okay, let us start the last lesson. Last lesson, that is lesson number seven, biotechnology. Lesson number seven, biotechnology. So, no, we should have that quickly. I'll show you what I am going to explain in this lesson. The brief introduction. We will learn about biotechnology. What bio? You all know it means living. Okay, you know that bio means it is living. So whatever, whatever I apply, I apply on living things. And maybe it's technology, maybe it is with the biological process. These all come under biotechnology. It is the use and application of living things and biological process. Now, identify examples of biotechnology, including cloning, genetic engineering, and artificial selection. These three things we will be studying about cloning, genetic engineering, and artificial selection. Okay, that is nothing reading. So what is each one of it? Let us- Miss, your phone. Hmm? Your phones and like TVs are like acquired to be a bi a biotechnology. Acquired, you mean acquired is like your own nature? Can it be bi biotechnology? Uh, is it biotechnology? I will say you, biotechnology when I say it means whatever something new is coming in the world to the living things. Like we have good machines, you know, we have, we are making robots, we are doing cloning, we are doing cross matching, all those new technologies, they come all under biotechnology. Okay. So what is genetic, what is genetic engineering? Genetic engineering is the process in which the genome of a living cell is modified for medical or industrial use. Imagine I want, I take a genome from a body, I take a gene from body, and that I took to the lab to investigate. Maybe I'm a scientist, I'm doing that. Okay, or I'm making, I'm using in the industry, I'm testing it, that is for us. What is it called? It is called as? Called as? Genetic engineering. It is called? Called as genetic engineer. Yes, called as genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is the process in which you take a genome of a living cell. You take a gene of a living cell and you take it to the industry or you take it for some medical use. That is called? Genetic engineering coming to artificial selection. That is selected. It, it, it test, it's being tested, and you call it a biotechnology. Is it right? Yes. If it's if you're testing it, yes. And you say it's biotechnology, but you don't know if it works or not. But it is still biotechnology. Okay. Mm. Now coming to artificial selection or selective breeding, what is it? Now, it is my own practice. Maybe I am practicing on animals. I take different kind of plants and a new plant come with a beautiful color, which is something very new, never before. So that is called as selective breeding or artificial selection new varieties of plants and domesticated animal. Maybe we haven't seen a cat before of that color and we try to introduce it, not by painting it, by genes, okay? So that is something called as artificial selection or also called as selective breeding. 
Now, the last one. What is a clone? Girls, in the movies, you have seen the word clone. Yeah, clone. Yes, that means a cell or piece of genetic material that is genetically identical to one from which it was derived. Cloning refers to any process in which a genetic duplicate is made. Girls, they take a genes from the body and they introduce into somebody else to make it identical. They make it, if, if you will see a small video of it better, you, you know, you will understand more well. We've been able to clone human embryos for about seven years. But as far as we know, no one's actually cloned a whole person. Turns out, ethics aren't the only thing holding scientists back. Cloning isn't the sci-fi marvel we think it is. It can be dangerous, often ineffective, and most of all, we just haven't thought of a good enough reason to do it. So here's why you'll probably never have to fight your evil clone. This is Dolly. Just kidding, that's a regular sheep. This is Dolly, the first mammal cloned successfully from an adult cell. She was born in 1996 after scientists figured out how to remove the DNA from the egg cell of a Scottish blackface sheep and basically replace it with the DNA of a mammary cell from a Finn Dorset sheep. They gave it a little electric shock to fuse the cell and get it replicating, placed the cells in the uterus of another sheep and boom, clone. This method, called reproductive cloning, could theoretically be used on humans. But this is a best case scenario. It took 277 tries for the scientists to get one dolly. Nowadays, cloning mammals generally has a success rate of about 10 to 20%, better than one in 277, but still a majorly inefficient process. Technically, it's not difficult to produce clone embryo, but human cloning has other hurdles that uh, need to be considered. To even research human cloning, scientists would need to ethically collect a large amount of donated eggs and find enough surrogates to carry them. But even if they made it through that logistical nightmare, the biggest issue is this. They're gonna hurt the baby or they're gonna hurt the person carrying the clone fetus. Across the board, scientists have found that some embryos expire before they're implanted. Others result in miscarriages and those that make it to term often die soon after birth or end up with severe abnormalities. Simply, these are risks that are easier to take when it comes to experimenting with sheep than with people. But arguably the biggest reason we haven't cloned a human being, there's not a good enough reason to. In pop culture, cloning is used to bring people back from the dead, but that's not how it works. Cloning someone would only create a twin, not a replica, since identical twins have the same genetics, but not necessarily personalities. And a never-let-me-go scenario where organs are harvested from clones. We usually see about it in movies, right? Cloning. And we think, oh, it's such a simple task. Nobody makes a clone with a good idea. They don't have that good intention, right? They have something bad plans about it. And nobody can make a clone exactly if a person died. If he died and they're planning to make a clone out of him, do you think he'll be exactly the same like him? No, 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 no. And even the facial expressions might be same, but the nature, it couldn't be the exactly same person. Am I correct? Yeah. And it's unsuccessful. That's what they said during those, uh, when they did it, either the embryo died or the, the person was abnormal. And first of all, the thing is, it's never done with good intentions. So just leave about it. Okay? But I think you all understood with a good, uh, when you see the video, you understood more well. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. 
So at the end of the lesson, I will tell you about how biotechnology impacts human life and world around us. A medical researcher might study DNA. Why somebody wants to study about DNA? To treat the inherited disorders. You remember I told you about one, one disorder called as that baby with same faces, downies, Brown syndrome. Remember Down syndrome? Yeah. Yes. So actually there are many diseases like that. And I told you about sickle cell yesterday. I told you about some other one. So to treat that, the scientists want to finish up those genetic disorders. And that's the reason they are studying about DNA. A crime scene investigator might study DNA in order to learn. Okay, imagine you are an investigator, maybe a police officer. Why do you want to study about DNA? Of course, we have to know that who was that, who was there at the scene? Who was there? Maybe his um, fingerprints are there or his hair is there. So with that, I can know whether it's the same person or not. Maybe somebody is blaming an innocent person. That time with the DNA, I can clarify that it was not him, it was somebody else. Well, I'll read out the vocabulary terms. Biotechnology, artificial cele selection, gen <coughs> genetic engineering, clone. Okay, so you have, a, you have a clear idea that what are we going to learn in this lesson? Everyone? Yeah, yeah, miss. Great, so let us begin. Miss, I think it's a really interesting lesson about cloning. Right. Yeah, great. So protected clothing keeps this geneticist safe as he works with infectious particle. See, now everyone knows about this because now because of Corona, you have seen so many pictures, people wearing and you know, they are covering themselves completely. So yeah. from infectious clothing, <laughs> when they make, when they, they are safe from the infectious particle, the scientist works, scientist works inside a greenhouse. He breeds potato plants. It's showing you uh, artificial breeding here. So biotechnology is the use and application of living things and biological processes. In the past 40 years, new technologies have allowed scientists to directly change DNA. They, yani in these 40 years, they even know how to change DNA. But biotechnology is not a new scientific field. You have artificial selection. What are some applications of biotechnology? We have the first one, artificial selection. See, you know, these are the different breeds we call as cabbage, we know as cauliflower, we know as broccoli, and we see that green color cabbage, the purple color, these all are new additions, am I correct? Yeah. Yes, one kind of tomato, but one color, but with different kinds. So your artificial selection is the process of selecting and breeding organisms that have certain desired traits. Because like, I want my, my plant to be purple in color. So what do I have to do? So that's my selection. It's like desired traits. Artificial selection is also known as selective breeding. What is it called? It is called as selective breeding because you are the one who are trying and planning and selecting it. Artificial selection can be successful as long as the desirable traits are controlled by genes. Only with genes, we call it as artificial selection. I don't paint the seed and say, wow, I don't paint the, you know, I don't paint the apple and say, this is my artificial selection. Mm -hmm. No, it's with the genes, girls. You need to take out the DNA and then replace it. <laughs> That's not an easy task. It's a very difficult task. Now, people do not change DNA during artificial selection. Instead, they cause certain elements to become more common in population. Now, instead of you know, changing the DNA, they do the crossbreeding. Like example, if I want my rabbit to be in white and brown and colored both, I choose the mom and dad with different colors to give a new breed. Am I correct? I choose, yeah. yes. Instead of going with the DNA and replacing the DNA, taking out the cell and putting it during the reproduction, that's a tough task. 
So the different dog breeds are a good example of artificial selection. All dogs share a common ancestor, the wolves. However, thousands of years of selection by humans have produced dogs with variety of characteristics. Now we have so many variety of characteristics just because of artificial selection. Is this clear? I think yeah. uh, two things you have learned about biotechnology and you learn about selection breeding and you must have a video now. Wait a minute. I don't know why this black color thing is here. What is it doing? Internet connection, please be quick. So that my girls see the video, come on. See, we need to speak like this nowadays. Uh, everything is on the connection. Let me open my mobile data. Clones to save the rich is not only unethical but unnecessary. Why clone an entire person when you can just minute, make guys. the part you need? Something theoretically therapeutic cloning. Can I don't know where did that come from. Tell me what can you see on the screen? Um, uh, I can like see the, the, si the scientist who's measuring. Yeah, I'll try to make a formula. Welcome to the lesson, Biotechnology. In this lesson, you'll explore different kinds of biotechnology, such as genetic engineering and cloning, and the impact it has on science and people's lives. The vocabulary words for this lesson are biotechnology, artificial selection, genetic engineering, and clone. Click each word to find out more about it. Did you know that people have been using biotechnology for thousands of years? Let's find out more about biotechnology and how people use it. Biotechnology is the use and application of living things and biological processes to solve problems. Artificial selection is the breeding of organisms for desirable traits. For millennia, people have used artificial selection or selective breeding to develop desirable traits in plants and animals. Over tens of thousands of years, artificial selection has been used to develop modern corn, turning it into one of the world's most important food crops. Click the images to learn more about this application of artificial selection. A grass-like plant called teosinte is the ancestor of modern corn. It developed seed pods that produced a single row of small seeds. Teosinte originated in Mexico and Central America, where people used its seeds for food thousands of years ago. By selectively sowing the seeds of teosinte plants with desirable traits such as more and larger seeds and taller stalks, it gradually developed into modern corn. Today's corn produces large multi-road ears filled with large kernels. It is used by people around the world as food. It is also used to feed livestock and other animals. Genetic engineering is the process in which a piece of DNA is modified for use in research, 
medicine, agriculture, or industry. Click each image to learn more about this type of biotechnology. Scientists can isolate a segment of DNA in an organism, change it in some way, and then place it back into the organism. This process is also used to insert genes from one organism into the DNA of another organism. The new genes provide the organism with a desired trait, such as resistance to pests or larger size or fewer seeds. Genetic engineering can be used to insert genes into crops that give the plants desirable traits, such as being hardier, more resistant to pests, larger in size, or brighter in color. The tomato on the left has been genetically modified to resist mold, while the tomato on the right has not. Miss, the tomatoes look old. Yes, that's what it's saying. This tomato is rotten and it doesn't have the resistance to, you know, stop this mold. But here it has the resistance to stop mold. Both are same tomato, but they modified this. That's why it is fresh, better than this. Gene therapy is a technique that is used to correct a defective gene in an individual affected with a genetic disease. This technique is still in its experimental stages. People who are affected by type 1 diabetes do not produce their own insulin and must receive insulin shots. A form of E. coli bacteria has been genetically modified to produce insulin. To do this, the gene that makes human insulin is inserted into the genes of a strain of E. coli bacteria. After the gene is inserted, the bacteria becomes an insulin-producing factory. Once produced, the insulin is extracted from the bacteria, purified, and ready for use by humans. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'll continue in the next class then.